Hey guys, Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be solving the serial killer murder mystery. So earlier in the day, I uploaded what I thought was the first clue of this series, and apparently there is three clues that you have to piece together. So it's actually a little bit smaller than I thought. Um, so in case you guys did not watch that first video, let's take a look at the first clue. Now, it does not matter in what order you find these in. Um, it's going to piece them together, clues one, two, and three. So again, quick reminder, this first clue is located just to like the southeast of Valentine. So this is a good one to get as soon as you get into chapter two. It's underneath this like train track bridge and uh, the clue you actually get is posted on like a stake or like a little support beam on the side. So that right there is clue number one and you're gonna start to develop a theme here that this is like definitely a serial killer because all of the scenes are going to look very, very similar. So that right there is the first one. The next one is a little bit further away. It is just south of Wallace Station. It's still pretty close to Valentine, so you should be able to get these two uh, roughly pretty quickly. And you'll find the second one, it's sort of like on a field and it's just this big rock. And this time it says, do you see? And it's sort of like the same style, like the torso with the strings, uh, the, the text written on the side. And uh, just like our first instance, we can find a severed head with a, another clue or a note uh, inside of the guy's mouth. And you'll find him on the rock just to the left. It is very, very interesting. Let's just say that. And we gather our second clue in this location right here. So we only have one more to go. We have two map fragments. We need our third and final one. Our final one is pretty far away. Uh, I would say it is probably the toughest to get to if you're just starting the game for the first time because it it is a place that you're going to have to journey to and you probably won't have any stage coaches. It's actually just to the east of Braithwaite Manor and it's actually on the S of that meadow woods right there, right below, I think it's Boulder Blade or something like that, Boulder Blade something. And you'll actually find this on like a super overgrown tree. It has like roots that uh, you can actually climb on. And the text says, behold, again, it's the same way. It's the top half of the uh, torso that's sort of strung up. And uh, from there, you can actually find the third and final clue, the severed head. It's on the backside of the tree, sort of in a bush. And you can take the note out and it will complete the map. Now, you actually have to go to your satchel if you want to view the entire map. And this is what it looks like. It is three parts. You can see it sort of looks like it's a small bridge leading into the woods and then a destroyed cabin with what looks to be a cellar and a combination lock of 6, 34, 32. So from there, you just sort of have to figure out where that is. That is definitely the hardest part because that clue isn't super obvious as to where precisely it's located. But don't worry because that's why we've got this video. It's actually located just to the west of Valentine. So most of the clues and things you're gonna be dealing with take place near Valentine. That is the one that is the furthest away. So it will probably be the most difficult. So it's actually called Lucky's Cabin. That's what you're gonna be looking for. And uh, once you pull into Lucky's Cabin, you are going to notice that it does have a lot of the same traits like the buzzards and the bodies and stuff like that. And at least when I entered the area, a giant question mark came on my HUD display. And it doesn't necessarily mean to go to where the question mark was located. I think it's just in that area, you know, something is going on. So I just went up to Lucky's Cabin and you guys can see that there's a cellar there. You open the door and you can end up going inside. And what I found inside is incredibly creepy. So again, it looks like the lair, the dungeon of a serial killer, a murderer. He's got knives and you know weapons and there's blood and body parts everywhere. It's pretty insane. There's also a lot of things that you can check out in here as well. There's a letter that he has written that is apparently called Letter to the Editor. And I'm not sure if this is him writing about himself in the third person. Uh, I'm really not too sure, but that is a letter that he ultimately wrote. Uh, there's a couple of other things as well. Now, one thing I would recommend is before you go any further, I would actually grab your lantern from your horse because it is really difficult to see in there. Like I have my brightness turned up all the way 
and it was still really hard to see. So I would definitely go get your lantern because there is a back room that I almost missed. Like I, I wasn't sure if I was, you know, exploring this whole place. And man, did I discover some creepy stuff in there? I mean, there's skulls, there's bodies, there's, you know, wanted posters, there's a camera. And this is when things get pretty interesting because you can actually examine a knife and then all of a sudden someone strikes Arthur. And I'll actually let you guys take a listen to this next encounter right now. <laughs> Have you come for me? Or was this all nasty surprise? Or maybe it's both. Maybe it is a nasty surprise, even though you knew I was going to be here. Which is it? You should think about that. Save yourself thinking about what's about to happen. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's not going to be nice and fun. I mean, it'll be fun for me, but it won't be nice for you. At least no one's found it nice so far. Maybe you'll be the first. <laughs> Do you like pain? Is it your friend? It's about to become your very close friend. Very close. So needless to say, that was incredibly creepy and that guy really does fit the build as a serial killer. Luckily, we had a head right next to us that we were able to throw at his face we hog tied him up and now we're taking him to the sheriff. And from there, it is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You just have to go back to Valentine, go to the sheriff's department, and you can actually turn this guy in. But what happens next is even crazier. And I'll let you guys take a listen to that right now. Found that fella you were looking for. Which fella? Yeah. Put him that. down. Put him down. Oh. Fella been... Been... Well, it ain't nothing nice. A lot of folk disappeared over the past few years. This sick son of a bitch, well, he ain't right in the head. That's so. Uh, head over to the cellar of that broke down shack on the road to the falls. See for yourself. Okay, well, come on here. My name is Edmund, Edmund Lowry Jr. And you'll remember that, my friend. I'm sure I shall. Well, you are a frightening fella. Well, I'll behave, sir. I'll behave as expected. Well, you better. And I'll get you a lawyer. Don't you worry about that. You get in that cell, come as you be. Get him! Get him off me! Like I said, have someone head up to his cabin. I uh, think he killed quite a few. Uh, oh, there's a lot of sick uh -huh. bastards out there. Here. Here. Here's some money for your trouble. Thank you, sir. What a mess! So this serial killer turned into like a werewolf vampire. He tried to go for this guy's neck, his jugular, and uh, we had to end up shooting him. And uh, we actually saved the sheriff's life, which was pretty cool. And for that, we do get a nice cash reward. So completing this is a good way to make money, I guess, in Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, $20 so far is the largest amount I've seen. And granted, I haven't been playing for a super long time. Uh, but $20 is the most I have seen. So uh, that can actually get you a good bit. And uh, yeah, that right there is how you complete the serial killer mission. Technically, the mission is called American Dreams, uh, so it's basically a three-part clue that you have to find. You have to go to the location, 
basically beat up the guy and then bring him to the sheriff. But I think that was pretty cool because, I mean, if you were to just find those randomly throughout the world, like I thought I did earlier this morning, you wouldn't really have any idea what they could potentially mean. But anyways, that right there is all the information I've got for you guys in this video today. That is how you solve the serial killer mystery in Red Dead Redemption 2. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, more on this in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.